We are glad to have Celia here. Hi, Celia. Miss you guys, love you guys a whole bunch. And um, Melanie is again with us. Praise the Lord. Praise God, Melanie. Someday I'm going to get to meet you face to face. And I'm hoping it won't be in the air or what? Yeah. <clears throat> um, Julie. Hi, Julie. Bless you. Carol. Oh, Carol. We miss you. Hope you feel better than a barrel. And Ramon. And Ramon knows, Raymond knows I'm weird, so. <clears throat> All right, we are in Galatians, and we're in the second chapter, and we have been studying the, the believer's crucifixion, <clears throat> and um, this uh, is one of <clears throat> three scriptures, actually, in the book of Galatians that mentions being crucified with Christ. Um, <clears throat> We probably won't get to those other two just because our semester is going to end before it felt like it even started. <clears throat> yes, in between classes we will have an important announcement that will change literally what we do instead of class, <laughs> which is called break. So we're in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, so he's talking about Christ, <clears throat> he's living it by the same faith that Jesus lived by, who loved me, which relates to loving and giving yourself. <clears throat> And then the next verse says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. All right. Boy, there's a whole lot to that, but um, <clears throat> let's just stick with uh, the first part right now. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about, because he says that, he says, um, Christ liveth in me. He literally says that. Christ liveth in me. And as we've discussed, pretty much every believer believes that Christ lives in them. Okay? And most will gladly claim that he is their life. <clears throat> but not that many people you talk to that are Christians claim his death as their death. <clears throat> they will claim his life and they will claim that they have his life, but they do not claim the death. And, and Paul is very specific. I am crucified with Christ. He doesn't start with the life. He starts with the death. And he doesn't start with the death in relationship to what Jesus did so that he would have life. He starts with what his crucifixion so that he would have life. Okay, well, that's ponderable. Because we, we look at, we... We claim Jesus' death is the means by which I have life. Well, that's true. That's true, except for there is also this reality that by his death I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And it is through our being crucified with him that his life is able to manifest through us. So um, <clears throat> when you, you know, remember we... At the beginning of this class, or at a certain juncture in this class, we talked about <clears throat> Saul of Tarsus becoming Paul and the drastic change that happened with him. Um, <clears throat> so when you check with him, not just in those scriptures that we alluded to in those classes, but when you check with him in so many places in the scriptures, he directs us to the cross. He will always direct us to the cross, okay? Well, it's interesting here, because <clears throat> there's many different angles of the, of the work of the cross, but he directs us here not to the work of the cross, but to our death. That's not a work for us. It's, it's, it is like a work against us, if you will. I mean, you can see it that way. 
it's not a benefit if you will see it that way. Now it is because we get Christ's life. The result of that is we can live by the life of another. But um, uh, so, so he is always quick to point to the cross. <clears throat> and in this case, he's not pointing to the cross for salvation. He's not, you know, he's not just pointing to Jesus' death for us. But he's pointing to the cross as the place of our own crucifixion. All right. Now, I remember the first time I really looked at those scriptures and realized what it was saying, it was sort of strange to me. It was almost like another language. It's like, what? What is this about me being crucified? I mean, I remember clearly saying in my mind, the whole point of the death of Jesus was so I wouldn't have to die. <laughs> so why am I being asked to die? And more important than that, I thought Jesus died so I could live. What is this about me dying so that he could live in me? Not just so he could live, you understand, but so he could live in me. Because this is a personal thing and we'll, we can get into that more eventually. <clears throat> um, I've always liked the way that Galatians 2.20 starts. It starts with, I am. You know, I am. And if you, <clears throat> if you ask a lot of people, a lot of believers, you know, well, what are you? They'll say, well, I am, you know, the <clears throat> I'm a king's kid. You know, you hear stuff like that. You, uh, I am this or that. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Methodist. I'm a, okay. Well, Paul begins, he says, I'm a crucified with the Christ. If he was Italian and he wasn't, he was Jewish. <clears throat> uh, and uh, so um, that's how he, be, this is what I am. Okay, what has Jesus made, made you? Well, by the cross, he's made me crucified. You know, that's what I am. That's not what I do. I don't do crucified stuff. I am crucified. You know, so just to point that out, if you're doing crucified stuff, <clears throat> it needs to be done by the life that I now live in the flesh, which is Christ. That's what he said. Not by some doctrine <clears throat> of being crucified and this is what Jesus, you know, we always do that, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't fake it. You know, I'm pretty sure. He wouldn't fake it. <clears throat> and I'll tell you this, if Christ is your life, you don't need to know what Jesus will do because he'll do it. You know, I mean, the, the, the more interesting question is what would Judas do? <clears throat> because he would, we know what he would do. And we do that with one another and with, you know, because we, we don't have Christ formed in us. We allow things that Judas would do, you know. So, and so this is, this is Paul's belief. This isn't just a passing thing because he, he addresses it, like I said, <clears throat> three times in Galatians, but that's just where he uses the word uh, about us being crucified in relationship to us. But all through his epistles, <clears throat> excuse me, um, he is telling us his belief system. And his belief system, what do you say in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 or something there, 2? Um, I'm determined. That's a determination. I love that. I am determined. See, there's a, there has to be a determination to move toward the cross instead of moving Jesus toward the cross. Here, Jesus, let me help you get on the cross and die for me so that I can get the goodies. Okay. There has to be a determination. I am determined. Okay. But part of that determination there is I am determined not to know anything among you but Christ and him crucified. <clears throat> okay. So it is, it is 
not just a determination to know the cross, not just a determination to know Christ crucified, not even just a determination to know that I'm crucified with Christ, but he says, I am determined not to know anything else besides Christ and him crucified. You know. <clears throat> and as the Spirit of God began to breathe on that, to my being, I realized that uh, because I had come from Kenneth Copeland and stuff like that, another ministry, and all the emphasis was on prosperity and blessing and everything. <clears throat> so it was radical for me to hear, you know, to read the Bible's even suggesting that we're crucified with Christ. <clears throat> um, and not only that, but that Paul, the guy who God used to write most of the New Testament, was determined <clears throat> not to know anything else. In other words, that was the area God wanted us to focus in. That was what was important to him. That was why one of the main reasons, yes, we're saved, thank God, but we're, folks, we're saved from our sins that we committed. We're saved from the punishment that's going to come to us from the sins that we committed. But he doesn't save us from going to the cross with him. <laughs> you see what I mean? But somehow there is an understanding in our minds. Somehow we grasp that this is not right. I can't be crucified with Christ. I need to be alive so that I can glorify him. Well, you glorify him, folks, with, with the correct offering. Amen? Scriptural. Well, this correct offering is <clears throat> that you offer up the Son in your earthen vessel, living sacrifices. Present your bodies, therefore, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> Be not conformed to this world. Y'all remember we've discussed that in this, in this particular <clears throat> class. Um, so... So when, when Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, you know, and, and, and that's, we all should say that because it did take place. That's what you are. That's what I are, because I am. That English absolute truth. <laughs> well, okay, really bad English, but still. Um, that's what you are. You are crucified with Christ. That's, that's it. Okay, well, all right, let's think about that. That reality is settled in God's mind. When Jesus went to the cross, you, he took you there and wants that to work in you as being crucified with Christ. That's what he wants. Okay. So in God's mind, that is settled. That's not going to change. Okay? In eternal reality, that's settled. You know? That's who you are, crucified with Christ. And that's not going to change. In the Word, <clears throat> that's not going to change. Anytime you turn to Galatians 2.20, it'll always still say that we are crucified with Christ. See? So, when we say it's not going to change, it is not irrevocable, though. Not, it is irrevocable to God. It is irrevocable in the word. It is irrevocable in eternal reality. But <clears throat> we can choose to live separate from that reality. We can choose to just not embrace that. We can say, well, 
the vast majority of what I've been taught says this, um, and uh, so I'm not going to move from that into because see, being crucified with Christ affects everything. Someone can say, "Well, I'm called to be a missionary." Well, you're, you're crucified with Christ, right? I, I can be called to be an evangelist. I can be called to do children's ministry. I can be called. You see, this overrides, or maybe a better word is this fills full everything because it is the fulfillment of everything. And if that's not, if that's not our reality, <clears throat> then we're just doing stuff for God, which is what the Jews did. I mean, why not just stay under the old covenant then? That's because that's what the Jews did. And that's, you know, and God decided, okay, we've had enough of this, you know. In other words, he's, he, if he condoned it at one time, he doesn't now. But the condoning it of one, at one time was in lieu of offering shadow sacrifices that represented the same thing. Not just, for example, every sin offering meant you should have died. You know, every, every peace offering involves something that is related to death. Every thank offering. See, we go... Thank you, Jesus. Okay. They went, well, if we want to give thanks to God, we need to bring a lamb and offer that up. And God would go. He wouldn't look at the person. He would look at the lamb and he would say, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. But, but what, what do we do? We just go, thank you, Jesus. Or we go, thank you, Jesus. Whatever. <laughs> However we do it. But we do it. We do it without a lamb for the most part. On the other hand, what if all of all those actions that were done on the altar during the time of the Jews were supposed to be done on the altar of our hearts now? All, all of those things, it, the fulfillment of that is come. And the thing that God wanted is come. He put the lamb where? In us. Why? So that we could keep him alive, pet him, and treat him like a really sweet puppy or something, you know. I have the, I have the lamb on the inside. No, so he could be offered because that's what he does. That's the way he lives. He lives sacrificially. He lives to give, you know. Some people live to give. All right, so... So, so all this is, <clears throat> is settled, okay? It's settled, that's great. Um, and, but but what, what are we really choosing and in what manner are we choosing? I mean, it's all settled, but guess what? <clears throat> it's not that our relationship to this reality is not that the doctrine should be settled and we should say the doctrine is settled. It's all settled. The doctrine's all settled. The work is all settled. The doctrine of the work. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? The doctrine of the work is all settled and therefore I'm okay with this <clears throat> because, because it's not a doctrine. Christ is in us is not a doctrine. Christ in us is not a doctrine. It may, well, I can't say that. It may be a doctrine to us, but it's not a doctrine to the Father, and it's not a doctrine to eternal reality that will never change, and it's not a doctrine to my word that he is, I've exalted the word above my name. It's, it's not, <clears throat> you know. So we can say it's unchangeable, but that's, it's, it's unchangeable in the heart of God. It's unchangeable in eternal reality, but it needs to become unchangeable in us where we, we say, you know what, I am crucified, and we allow Christ to live in us because the whole point of being crucified is that Christ lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but it's not my, me I, because I'm crucified. Christ lives within me. Christ lives in me. <clears throat> Then, 
that means that we, we're not, you know, it's easy to choose a doctrine. Um, let me say this, let's see. It's easy to choose a doctrine on Sunday when we come to church and somebody's preaching the doctrine and we go, amen. It's easy to choose a doctrine when you go out and you run into another Christian and you say, well, this is what I believe. But this isn't a doctrine. This is I am. You know, so who are you? You know, I mean, you know, John the Baptist's answers were great, but they weren't that he's crucified. But they were great because he said, I am not he. I am not the one. There's one coming, and I am not even worthy to, you know, well, well, we say, well, he's come, and now I'm worthy. Okay, well, have you ever, have you ever, anybody ever read the book of Revelation? <clears throat> they don't, like, shift people in the great multitude that's before the throne of the Lamb. They don't shift people and bring someone up and go, and what do you think of brother so-and-so? And all of that great multitude goes, you are worthy. You are worthy. And then, okay, next, come on up here. And good thing we got eternity because this will take a while. You know? <laughs> you know? Next, get up here and hear how worthy you are. You are worthy. You know? And then can you see they bring John the Baptist up and say, what are you, John? He says, I am not worthy to unloose the latchet of his feet. I am I am." You know, I'm not him. I'm not what it's about. He is. He's greater than me. He was before me. So I'm always going to see in light of everything that he's greater than me. And I'm really going to see that he's before me in everything. I'm not going to put me before him. Okay. You do that by by having seen the cross to such a reality that you can say without blasphemy, I am crucified with Christ. Because a lot of people say it and their life doesn't look like a crucified Christ, it looks like them, alive still. Well, but I believe the doctrine, you know. Well, that's fine, but that's not it. Because the life I now live in the flesh not the doctrine I now hold to in my brain, but it relates to a life that you live, not just, you know, certain realities that we've, we've chosen. <clears throat> but this is something that you can choose, and you choose it on a daily basis. You choose Christ above you. You, you choose Christ before you. You choose Christ... Um, uh, as greater than you. Um, you know, what you need is Jesus, not me. Okay, so, so we could all say that, right? We could be talking to anybody and they're going, oh, I, I just have a problem and I wish, wish you'd help me with it and da 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 da. And we could go in a very spiritual manner, what you need is Jesus, not me. You know, and I can hear the angels going, Amen. Well, that ain't the gospel, but that's better than what, you know, <laughs> better than some other ones, you know. But God would want us to say, but you need Jesus, not me. And here he comes because I'm crucified. Hello. <laughs> you know, where does that count? In, in church? No. A very little counts in church. <laughs> I know that uh, I can get in a lot of trouble for saying that, but, you know, because we can all fake it in church. That's why I'm saying that. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about our little buildings that we say is the church. And, and there we can, we can be kind and we can give money and we can, you know, we can get involved with things and whatever. Well, that's fine. And most of that is, well, I would say that's, that's done in every church and every denomination, including um, cults and everything else, you know, <laughs> that it, it's, all, it's all the same stuff, you know. Where's Christ? Well, they say, well, he's up there. He's still up there. 
Well, I thought God put them in you also. Not, not just raised him from the dead, but put his nature in you so that the life you now live in the flesh will be by the faith of that one who gives by pouring out his life for someone else. So, <clears throat> in so many ways, we are choosing our own life every day. We choose it. We choose it. <clears throat> I do, yes, I firmly believe that the Spirit of God must reveal this in every believer, that me standing up here and saying it is not enough. However, I do believe, you all know this, I believe in planting seeds. I believe seeds go in, and I believe the Spirit of God, because the Scripture says someone plants and some water, but God gives the increase, see. And the increase is what? The life coming forth of the seeds that are put in you. Isn't that it? The, the, the harvest is Christ coming forth in the church. <clears throat> I've written a book on it, but I've written a book on about everything. So, All right, so choosing our own life. Okay, when we, when we put it that way, we go, well, that sounds bad, <laughs> you know, because, you know, and, and I, I know what I would say because I said it early on because I resisted this because I was like Paul. It's like, this is wrong. You know, it's, 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 I mean, I did. Some of you remember, we had a, we had a church with hundreds of people in it and I would stand up and rebuke the pastor. And then sit down, I was, you know, early 20s. And, you know, nobody would come rebuke me and then someone would come eventually and just say, hey, have you ever looked at the scripture right here? You know, you, they'd show it to me and then I'd go back to the dorm because I was in Bible school and this church was part of it. I'd go back and look at it and the spirit of God would whip me like I was a child, a rebellious child. He would take the word of God and he would challenge everything I believed until he broke that all down. And I said, you know, I just want to know Jesus. Because I thought, you know, my, I was greater than even the guy who'd been in the ministry forever and I'd only been saved a year. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> because the Lord had really talked to me. Well, you know, he talks to everybody on some level. The question isn't, does God speak to you? The question isn't, have you seen things in the word? The question is, is Christ crucified living in us? And are we crucified with him? You know. <clears throat> so when, we, when that's just a doctrine, what do we do? Come on, what do we do? We choose on a regular basis not to go with him because our, our doctrines are sound and all of our doctrinal ducks are in order. But we can do anything we want. We can say anything we want. We can treat anybody any way we want because our doctrinal ducks are in order and we feel okay with that. We shouldn't feel okay with violating I am crucified. <laughs> Amen? We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't feel okay with choosing our life. We shouldn't feel okay with choosing against God. We shouldn't feel okay with choosing against the cross or choosing against the word of God. We should, in all of that, in all of the wrestling that happens, where you go, well, what about this? What about that? And I know, man, I know all about it. Um, there's still that still small voice inside. You know, remember the story of, of Elijah? It was Elijah. And that still small voice is saying, at least this is the way it worked for me. Look, this is the truth. And I would go, 
could you be a little more quiet? <laughs> it's a still small voice for God's sake. Everything else is blaring and going, no, and this and that, and all the voices in my head, which were not demons. <clears throat> they were my stand against my stand, not demon stand. Well, I chased them off because I really was with God. No, mine were me. Because I thought I knew the I thought I knew the scripture. And I thought I knew the Lord. I yes, I knew the Lord enough to to be saved, to pray, and, and that's fine, and that's great. But I was being challenged on a on a level of life, daily life, daily choosing. Daily choosing. <clears throat> and you know, I remember once I started sort of Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be determined to know Christ and Him crucified. I remember when I did that. I said, Okay, I'm gonna, <clears throat> you know, okay, I am crucified with Christ. Amen. I I receive Your Word. I'm not choosing against Your Word. I'm not choosing against Your cross. I'm not choosing against You, Lord. I'm not trying to choose my own life. I'm crucified with Christ. And then I would do something that was very much Randy, <laughs> and I would go. And one of the early, this is the early, early days, you were there, I would go, I'd go back to Galatians and I'd go, this, you know, has this changed? Is this changed? I'd read Galatians, I am crucified, kind of right? Okay. Then there's a, a disconnection there based on me, not the word. The word of God's still saying the same thing. But the good news was the word hadn't changed. I mean, that may sound silly to you, but it was such a comfort to me that I, every time I do, I could go back here and go, the truth is still the truth is still the truth. And I, that's what I would say in my head. I would say it. The truth is still the truth is still the truth is still the truth. Doggone it. Lord, you've got to work this in me. I need your son. You want your son. I'm not playing around. And for me, it was a wrestling match for a, for a while. <clears throat> wrestling with God, you know. Most people are saying, I rebuke the devil, you know. <laughs> That's God you're <laughs> rebuking there, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and he, he, kept, he kept doing his thing, you know. And I'm going, well, no, actually, you know, I, I knew it was God that I was wrestling with. I wasn't deceived to think it was a devil, but I know others that have done that. And it was like, I, I'm wrestling with God because, you know, part of it is I don't have a John the Baptist mentality. I'm not really going in everything as that, see, because I don't think it's real. I mean, I don't think it's fully, fully settled until it manifests on some level. I mean, you know, I didn't say full takeover. I mean, a dove brings back a little leaf of the new creation and everything else is dead. And you go, everything else is dead, but there's still new, there's a new creation and thank you, God. And look, you know, and, you know I'm holding the dove and going, you sweetie, not twig. You know, like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and the other dove's going, <coughs> <laughs> He's going, let me go. Let me. <laughs> but it, it said, don't worry. Yes, you've been in the death. You've been in the ark for a stinky ark with all these animals raging. And you can't sleep at night because all this noise and the smell is atrocious. But there's a whole new creation that's going to smell not like a, a nice rain cleansed everything. No, a real rain cleansed everything. And it's going to smell as fresh as fresh can smell. It's not going to be the same old creation. It's going to be a new creation. And you're going, wow, wow. Because you got that. You know what I mean? He, the dove brought you that. And... <clears throat> You're okay, you know. I mean, you had your doubts <laughs> along the way. 
You had your ups and downs. You had your, you know, times at the bottom of the ark, you know, kneeling down in, in poop to the ankles, you know, and you're going, Lord, is this really you? Maybe it would have been better if I died out there with the people, you know, that, <laughs> you know. But, you know, he's not, see, what we want him to do is that a light shine through the top of the ark onto us in kneeling in the poop and go, you're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You know, this is a word from the Lord, me. <laughs> I'm going to give you a word of the, from the Lord. Yeah, you're, you're going to be fine. <laughs> well, I have a bumper sticker on one of my guitar cases that says, it's, it's going to be fine, or it's going to be okay. And then underneath it in small letters it says, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we want. <laughs> Amen. That's what we want. We want that. We want to hear that from God personally. But he's, he ha you know, what he's done wasn't personally. It was universal. We all went to the cross, but we have to appropriate that personally. And it's not just appropriate that. It is the Christ that died 2,000 years ago on the cross is still self-giving on the inside of us. Did you have a comment? Yeah, I was just thinking the next time he let you know, you were like holding on to that dove. The next time you let it go, it didn't come back. He had to go out there by faith and... Except that. Yeah, and that's where I was going is that he, he, you know, we want that light to shine upon us in the ark. <clears throat> Lord, if you just give me a word of encouragement, <clears throat> I put you in the ark, I sealed it up, you know, <clears throat> and you need to be with me through the worst of it. Well, the worst of it is wrestling with God and going that I miss God and or you know all all this stuff. I, I can't even remember all the stuff I went through, but because it, it, but it was bad and it was long. At least it seemed long. <clears throat> wasn't long compared to how long I've lived now. It's just like, Phew. but at the time you're going through it, you're just going, oh, you know, and just agonizing. But one day the dove shows up. And he's just got a twig. And we don't realize, you know, if, if that dove flew to us before the flood, we're out and, you know, we're tending the cows, you know, you know, along here, you know, and all this. And, <clears throat> and a dove flew up with a twig. We go, oh, this is nice. This is nice. But, you know, you know, we go back to Noah, our dad, and we'd say, hey, you know, I had a little dove bring me a twig. It was, it was kind of cool. But you're in the ark with all this mess and all this stuff in there, and, and you don't know when it, you're going to break through to the reality. And the dove, the white dove, the, as it were, flies into that mess and brings you evidence that only the spirit could bring. Then you go, glory to God, this is it, this is the beginning, this is, this is the hope of the full work done in me, not the hope of the work being finished, because outside it's done, there's a whole new creation. I want that in me. I want that real in me, I don't want to I don't want to stay in the ark and climb up to that little window and point out there and go, it's real. And climb back in the poop, <laughs> you know, and and act like, you know, my life isn't a stench unto God. <clears throat> so, the Father has chosen to put His Son in us, and the Father has chosen that He wants an increase of that Son. Okay. He put his son in us, and he wants an increase of that son, and, and the way that he chose to do that wasn't cloning. It wasn't, uh, you know, there's so many different methods we think we could come up with. He chose to have that, what did Paul say? In Galatians, 
I travail in birth until Christ be formed in you. They had Christ in them. They were Christians. They were in the church of Galatians that were spread throughout. But there was a travail going on. You know? And, you know, we can sit around and go, well, I got the seed in me. But sometimes, you know, it's time to push. <laughs> you know, I want this seed coming out of me. This is my desire. This is my desire. This is my determination. This is my determination. You know, Randy can, you know, Scott and his sweetheart said something on Sunday. Well, you know, Randy's always, you know, had his heart after God and everything. And, and you know, in that sense, never wavered. And in that sense, I don't think that I have ever really wavered. I've had a passion, but I had to come to a place where this is my desire. This is my determination. And I don't care what other people do. And some of you have been around long enough to know that I don't. I'm going to go with the Lord and after the Lord with all my heart. And, you know, if you want to come, come on. But if you don't, then that's fine. You know, I'm not going to fall down and go, oh, I don't have Jesus anymore. Still got the same Jesus. You see? And it's, it's, settled, it's settled in the heart of God. It's settled in eternal, eternal reality. It's settled in the word Praise God, it's settled in me. Okay. But then you can sit out there and go, well, praise God, you know, Randy's determination has carried us forth. You know, oh, my God, just make me throw up. You, it needs to be your determination. That needs to, I am determined not to know anything but Christ and him crucified. This is, this is who. It's a who. Not a doctrine, you know. The you look at the denominations. This denomination, they're big five doctrines that only they hold, you know, or they hold in a certain way. And then this denomination, it's this and that and that. And they argue over doctrines and how to explain the word, but they never see the Lord in the word. And they they're just it's just and we could be the same way. Do you know that? We got our doctrine, Christ in you, and I'm crucified with Christ and all this. And, and then we're just pushy. No Jesus, no one. Of, I would rather live Jesus than preach Jesus. None of that. I'd rather preach Jesus and show off what I know, and then I can sword fight with him and then beat him because I, I've, I know more scriptures. We, we refer to the Bible as the sword, you know. <clears throat> sort of the spirit or whatever. So we, you know, so we feel good about ourselves and, you know, but the father chose to put his son in us. He didn't just choose to save us and give us doctrines. He chose to put his son and he chose that for an increase of that son in us. I travail in birth till Christ starts coming forth. Now, that's what we need is a coming forth. That's what Paul's saying. He's saying you've received the doctrine of it, you've received the teaching, you've heard it in the Old Testament scriptures that I shared when I'm there, but it's time for a coming forth. Amen? So, how bad is it when every day we're choosing Barabbas? You know, every day we, you know, uh, Pontius Pilate says to the multitude, uh, I can let Jesus go or Barabbas. But Barabbas was an instigator of crimes and a rebel. We go, I like that. I'll choose Barabbas. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm with him, you know. But that's what we choose in our life. We're choosing Barabbas. We have the choice between Jesus or us. We may not be named Barabbas, you do understand that, but we're choosing us. We're reenacting the same stories of the Bible, but we're going with the enemy or we're going with the, pe the crucifiers instead of <clears throat> with the crucified. Not going with him. I wrote down here, we, do we choose to ignore the cross in relationship to that purpose, an increase of Christ? Will we embrace the cross so I don't go to hell? Will we embrace the cross so, so um, uh, I'm, I won't be punished for what I've done wrong? Um, or will we embrace it?
because Father, this was your intention from before the foundation of the world. You wanted that image in us. You wanted that nature in us. You wanted Christ formed in us. <clears throat> and that way, if, if our heart falls into that, then we are, uh, we're choosing Christ, not Christianity. But if we just fall into going through the same motions every church is, well, I, I pray and I read my Bible and I do this and I, you know, I mean, the Jews did all of that. They read the Old Testament. They read their Bible. They went to temple. They went, they prayed. They, <clears throat> all of the things that we call, you know, of God, God looked at and said, well, that all is a shadow. You're now the temple. You know, you, the sacrifices now are Christ through us, in us. And we're, but we're still settling for old covenant actions and, and rituals and things like that. Instead of just saying, like book of Hebrews, I want Jesus. <clears throat> I don't want a priesthood. I want Jesus. I don't want a, a temple, I want Jesus. I don't want uh, uh, offerings, I want Jesus. In every case, book of Hebrews, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. New covenant, the new covenant. <clears throat> so when he says, I am crucified with Christ, he's, he's saying, listen to this, he's saying, I am crucified. He didn't just say I'm dead. Okay? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. He's not talking about being dead with Christ like the old man. For, for example, <clears throat> uh, Romans. Romans 6, you know it. You're familiar with it. Romans 6, 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Okay. <clears throat> this is dealing with sin. And the victory is that the old nature needs to be put to death. All right. How shall we that are dead to sin? Okay. We're not just dead here. We're dead to sin. But it doesn't say crucified. Okay. We're dead to sin. Live any longer there. And know ye not that as many as so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death. Okay. Uh, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. So he didn't even say like as Christ was raised from the dead, so you will be. He didn't say that. I mean, you know, I mean, if, if I was in Bible school and somebody said that, I would go, yeah, it does. And then I would, because this is what I did over and over, I would read it and go, oh my God, it doesn't. Uh, like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we, but it doesn't say even so we are raised from the dead. It says we should walk in newness of life, and the real word there is new life. Well, what's that? What's Christ? So, all, all that it's talking about is being dead. It's talking about um, not, it's talking about Jesus took us into his death for sin. But this is talking about, in Galatians, it's talking about being crucified with him. In being crucified, you are judged. In being crucified, you are uh, um, um, look down on and being crucified you are um, bearing reproach that doesn't belong to you in being crucified with Christ there is a you know because Paul's going I am over here in Romans 6 we are and all of it happened at once all of it happened at once when he died on the cross here Paul is saying this is, this is not just death with Christ that happened 2,000 years ago that I reckon on, but you do that in Galatians, but that's in relationship to the old nature. He's not saying my old nature is not in Galatians 2.20. He's 
He's not saying my old nature is crucified. He's saying I am. And he's going into crucifixion the way Jesus did. I will bear this. I will have that nature. I will uh, bear his spirit in these situations. <clears throat> For you're dead with him in Romans 6. That's right. Adam is dead by Christ. But I am, I am crucified. I am choosing not just death with Christ. I am choosing I am, that I am crucified. I'm crucified. I'm hung on a cross. I'm not just, I was alive as an old nature and now I don't exist anymore. I am choosing that kind of death. You understand? Crucified death. It's different. It's not the same thing. It's not trying to communicate the same thing. It's, this is trying to communicate the life we now live in the flesh. That's trying to communicate that you can reckon on the death of the old nature. But this has nothing to do with the old nature. This has everything to do with, can I say it, the new nature, in other words, Christ in us. The emphasis is so that he might live. That death won't happen unless Christ, died, the one in Romans 6, doesn't happen unless Christ died and did a work that we really had nothing to do with. This work we have everything to do with. We can choose. I am with you, Jesus the crucified. I am with you, Lamb of God. And I am crucified. I am hung there. I am mocked. I am, I receive all of the things, not of death, Romans 6, but all of the things of crucified. So that I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to declare myself. I'm not going to use my defense. I, I, I'm not going to use my hands. Get it? Because they're nailed up there. I'm not going to use my feet because they're nailed up there. I'm not going to defend myself up here. I'm going to bless my crucifiers. The old nature didn't get that, didn't get that opportunity. <laughs> not, you read it in Romans 6. There's a death, all right. It's the death of the old nature. The best we can do is reckon on that. But to be crucified with Christ is to choose the crucified, capital C, is to choose the crucified. It is to say yes to your nature, your way, your, your you know, I, you're literally saying I choose your way, which is take up your cross daily, as it were. But you're taking up the nature of the selfless, slaughtered lamb. And you're saying, this is the life I want to live in the flesh. Romans 6 is not telling you a life that you're going to live in the flesh. It's, you know, there is a, this whole area of reckoning and of a finished work and of all of this. There is, there is. And it's every ounce true and it's some of the most wonderful stuff you'll ever see. Except we, if we really, really want the Lord and not just satisfied with the doctrine of it that just, you know, well, it's settled in my heart. I've studied the scriptures enough to believe this. Then we, we say, okay, I want the life that you did. That life that, and the way, the, the, as it were, the faith in which you lived it, which was to love, and he, he takes it personally. See, he's not, he's not saying, well, you know, 2,000 years ago. He's taken it personally in this sense. He says, who loved me and gave himself for me? And how am I not going to, if I'm given the opportunity, not going to love him and give myself so that he can live? Isn't that Galatians? I mean, Galatians 2.20? Isn't that what it's really saying? It is. It is what it's saying. And he's saying, I, I, you know, this is... This is, uh, it was like we look at the cross and we embrace all the reality of it and we say, okay, this is a, a finished work. But Paul looked at it. I mean, he saw all that because he's the guy who wrote all that too. But here he looks at the cross. He sees the crucified. And he sees 
what spirit went to that cross. He sees the living reality of it, and he says, I can't let that just save me. I, and let's take it another step. I can't just let that spirit um, um, uh, cover me in all of the ways that he died so that the work would be finished so I could just feel comfortable to live my life in the flesh. But, but God's pleased because I believe all the right stuff. Not Paul. No, he sees See, he doesn't just see Jesus dying for sin. He sees the crucified. He sees the slaughtered lamb. He sees the nature of God in it. And he says, that's it. I'm, this, this is a volunteer thing. I'm, I'm in. Amen. That's what I want. I want that life, that nature, that I'm choosing this. I'm choosing this. I'm not just choosing the cross for death of the old man. I'm choosing crucifixion. Amen? You see, you, do you see that? Yes. I'm choosing that. And in so choosing it, then um, there, is a, uh, there is a finished work that you walk on, that you have the comfort of, that you have. But more important than that, is that you know, I would never do that. I would, I would always choose myself in some circumstance. I'm just talking about daily life now. Remember, that's kind of what we've been talking about this whole time. Um, I would choose myself over that person. And I would think myself better than that person. And, but now, by Christ, I want to bless them. Do they deserve it? Well, probably not. It doesn't... The nature of Christ doesn't do this because people deserve it. Jesus died for all of us. None of us deserved it. Where do we get off point having that be the, the measuring rod where it never was to his nature, to his spirit? Never was. So that, that nature, that, that Jesus, that, that given one, that sacrifice, that sweet incense that comes up from him being that way to the Father does that for the least, does it for the worst. We don't understand that because we've never been the least or the worst in our own mind. <laughs> so it, uh, we don't get it. We don't even get it. So, uh, yeah, okay. But the least and the worst and the lame and the halt and the blind found their way to Jesus because they knew he had something. There was something about this guy. And the Pharisees followed him too to attack him and to point out what he did wrong and what, was, what they thought was wrong, of course. <clears throat> and never knew that they were totally wrong. I mean, they, they crucified the Son of God because they thought he was bad <clears throat> and Jesus died for them because he thought they needed it and he'd never said a word I am crucified with Christ Paul said and anyway it's, we're over a little bit now so I think we need to stop let me put down a marker I know, I get carried away, but you know, this, this, this Jesus, he's so beautiful to me. He is so, so beautiful to me. And I, I desire him, you know, more than fine silver and gold. You know, David said that. You remember that? <clears throat> well, what if you had an opportunity to, to, to pursue you know, fine silver and gold. And you said, you know what? I'm gonna, my whole life is going to be given to one thing. This crucified, selfless lamb. This little, this God that made himself like a little preemie lamb. And then l let the beast kill it. 
and he did it so that, so that the beast could be saved. My Lord, I mean, to David, that was better than silver and gold. It's like, my pursuit is clear. To Paul, who was, who was one of the greater Pharisees who was moving up the ladder, jumped off the ladder. <laughs> He said, I'm determined not to know anything but this, so that's where I'm heading. Father, we thank you for your spirit and your son, and we thank you that you are, you are here. You are here. You are here in us. And we thank you, Father, that your desire was not just to put him in us so that he would be some sort of means of direction or blessing, to our earth lives, to, to our Barabbas lives, but rather that there would be an increase of your son in each and every one of us. And that spirit, that blessed spirit that drew us when we first got saved will fill this earth with those who, who have no other desire than to decrease so that your son can increase. So Father, thank you. Continue to move on our hearts Continue to break down our concepts that, that war against the Lamb and help us embrace, embrace the least, the, the God who became the least so that we would find out what his true heart was. We ask in Jesus' name.